whether the team could switch points. Whoa, 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 guys. Whoa, whoa. whoa. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. I have never seen anything like that in my life. He hit that wall a ton. Oh, my gosh. Take a look. I think you're going to see him get loose the minute oh, he yeah. turns down into the corner. Yeah, and he's just, man. And that thing just absolutely. I will guarantee you that impact was well over 180, probably 185 miles per hour. We've already seen 199 or better getting in there going straight. That's a part of the racetrack. Gosh. Oh, oh I, I, I can't even hardly watch that. It's a part of the racetrack, but Murray said was a little slick getting in. Not Goodness. knowing if Michael changed his line a little bit, got a little too much into that speedy drive. spins around and Keselowski into it major points implications Montoya's car back in the wall Keep Carl it Edwards heavily damaged front and rear and Jeff Gordon has some damage as well yeah I don't think Jeff Gordon's got much damage but Montoya got into the 99 right there as they entered the corner yeah it looks like Gordon has zero damage. It all over here. and the 42 see Montoya just getting loose there and as he corrects his car he gets up into the 99 Jeff Gordon, as he turns his car down to try to miss these guys, it gets loose. Here comes the 12 car into it. Well, Truax just missed Gordon, and Newman just missed him, and you see where he said Brad Keselowski involved there. Gordon extremely lucky not to get damaged there. Yeah, and you might ask, why did Jeff Gordon spin out there? Well, you're going 170 miles an hour, and you see all he's doing is trying to turn his car. They've loosened his car up, so they've really got it loose, it looks like, but he's just having to turn the wheel. Did a great job. That one Pablo Montoya's on board camera. Well, riding along with Carl Edwards, who was in front of this, he thought it may be up high across the racetrack. Here's Carl's on board. Yeah, Carl's looking ahead. He's trying to make a pass on Matt Kenseth. Hold it up there. Hold the brake up there. Hold it up there. Hold it up there. He just got super loose. And he just caught he okay? just enough of the bumper to send Carl around. But as you said, he was just trying to go around the outside here. Man. Carl got the back end and the front and side of the car. Yeah, and for Jeff Gordon, he was already in that corner just as hard as he could possibly go. He couldn't afford to turn left any more than he was, and that's what made him get sideways and loose there during that. Four's going to get boxed right here as they try to go three Four wide. wide. Four wide. Four wide. Stuart Slater. Oh, Gordon's no. right into the wall. There's no. Edwards Allendinger. Oh, no, what but Gordon and Stewart, and then cars trying to sweep by on the outside. Menard, Montoya, McMurray, Harvin, or rather Boyer, That's, all get caught up in it. What a wadded up mess. To go three wide right here. You see uh, Gordon forces his way by right there. Oh, oh then Edwards. Edwards got into the back of uh, Stewart and got him into Gordon in That's the 24 car. Allmendinger, there's McMurray. And there they all go. Menard, I mean, Boyer. Menard, Boyer. Logano. Boy, look at Ryan Newman. Ryan Newman, a great job. Oh, by. Scott Speed just snuck through there. That's called bobbing and weaving. You see here, it gets just so bottled up. Not a lot of room to work. Trying to go three wide right here. Here comes Carl with the run up on the outside, calling the 99 Edwards. I think Gordon did Gordon touch Stewart little, just yeah, a little did, bit. But touch there. But then when he does, Edwards oh. has got a hit into the back of the 14 of Tony Stewart. I don't think Gordon got into Stewart enough to move him. It, the contact from it, Edwards, though, I think did. what happened was Stewart broke a little momentum. Edwards yep. had it in the 99, had that great run coming off four, and they got together. Oh, I agree. That's why Edwards got into Stewart. Gordon and Stewart getting together breaks the momentum right there. You see the green car Edwards back there. He's, he's trying to find a place to go. <laughs> that was a hard lick on that 24 car. It really was. And now watch them all sweep up through the quad oval and crunch the outside. Menard and Boyer. Harvick got through. And Scott Speed, here he comes, right the here. silver car. <laughs> Incredible job. On your track, trying to get by. On your oh, oh, look at that contact. The 81 of David Starr gets into the 0-1 of Joe Aramendia. Jason, Justin, 
Wow. Loft and Loft, Loft also gets turned involved around. as well. You got to watch the job that David Starr does in this crash. Caution's out, caution's out. Third caution of the night comes out. The 81 of David Starr, hometown hero involved. Joe Aramendia also involved in this. The 0-1's going to move up the racetrack. David's going to try to go to the, his outside, and he, he was trying to get between the 7 of Justin Lofton, and the 0-1 didn't quite make it. Now watch... Watch the 07 of Tony Jackson Jr. gets into Justin Lofton in the seven truck and turns him into the outside wall. Look, uh, David, David Starr still hadn't crashed. He was trying to, <laughs> he tried to all the way down the back straightaway, but he finally got ahead in the right direction. Just watch this 81 truck. He makes a mistake. He think I think he crowds up into Lofton, gets Lofton out of whack, spins into the 01, heads toward the outside wall, barely clips it. Watch, he keeps driving it, got it down to the bottom of the racetrack, kept going in the right direction. Big crash. Tough break for Justin Lofton. Yeah, Justin was just a was a victim. He was running his own line and watch. David Starr tries to squeeze in a hole that isn't there. He's moved up a little bit. The zero one moved up a little bit, which forced David to move up a little bit. But unfortunately, Justin Lofton in the seven truck was there. And look at the pace car. Now that blue line in the background, if the pace car is past that, he's drilled. Oh, and we just got word yeah, from NASCAR. Back, Dave. The 18, hold you one lap. They too said we sped. fast. They said we sped to keep from going a lap down. You heard it there. They're going to hold him one lap. Maybe they actually changed right sides first. Now they're changing the left. Well, I mean, he was going to be a lap down either way. Oh, well, I guess that's a little hand signal he's given the NASCAR official. <laughs> yeah, Check we, the right we side. apologize for Kyle. And can't shoot the messenger. You know, he was just trying to stay on the lead lap, and that's a chance you take. If you, if you make it, great. If you don't, he, all he's losing is what he would have lost if yeah, he had, the last word. had not made it. said unsportsmanlike conduct. That's the radio. That's the freedom of speech. They're going to... That's Kyle Busch's radio. Remember the uh, little gesture that we had to apologize for? It's going to cost him two more laps. NASCAR is going to pull him in. We're too hard for this. You're costing us. We rode park it for two laps. While all that goes on, the race continues out on the track. A lot of traffic back through the middle of this field. Caution. Oh, no, and Jeff Gordon. Where in the world? Oh, Reach him. He's over at the exit oh, of turn Burton. and Jeff Burton involved. This had to happen. And the opposite back end straight of the away. racetrack. God, we just raced on the back stretch. 24 cut up in front of me and caught my right front fender, my left front... Man, that's devastating for these two. Dad, gun. Look at this car's destroyed. The track. Here's what happened with Gordon and Burton. Well, I don't know about that. Wow. Hard contact for the 24. To me, like Burton did that on purpose. Well, it looked like the 24 slid up in front, maybe, and then jumped out of the gas as the caution came out. That's a pretty good lick, too. I don't know if maybe they made a little contact earlier. It does because the way we raced him in three and four, and he pulled up beside us and just tried to fake like he was going to turn into us coming off of two, and that's what caused all that crap back there. The car is over and done with now. We'll just get her fixed and roll on. Yeah, this well, it's not. Uh, Jeff Burton, I mean, Jeff Gordon's not happy at all. And they're going to go and talk it out here. Oh, uh -oh. and this is. Uh-oh. Well, we got a fight breaking out. Yeah, Jeff's not happy. Jeff, Jeff Gordon not happy with that. what happened there. Official stepping in between, but this is far from over. I mean, there weren't even words exchanged. This was in your face. I saw that coming because there was an ambulance behind Jeff Gordon's car for him to get in. He walked over there to the other one that they had for Jeff Burton. Side drafting off of him, had him pinned down. Oh, trouble on the back, guys. See cars going around. Three cars around, mid stretch. Truex wrecked. Mark Martin wrecked. Regan Smith in the outside wall. Caution at lap 215. Mark Martin, you see, he's uh, he's okay. I'm trying to get his wind net down. And remember, Martin Truex still sore from that hard crash at Martinsville last Sunday. Somebody got into somebody back there. I have to take a look at it and turn them in the outside wall. I think it was 
Truex. Martin Truex has climbed from his car. Mark is out. Two tough weeks in a row for Martin. Coming up from the bottom of your frame. Looks like Truex might have got into Keselowski, but did he have some help? I don't know if Truex just got, didn't try to stay off of Keselowski and the car got loose and shot across the racetrack. Here's a look from Kevin Harvick. 31 shot track, stay low, it's all good. Stay in it, stay in it, stay in it. Not sure. I, I, don't think he, I, think, I think Truex was, was really, I think he was about to spin out. From A.J. Allmendinger. Coming on the bottom here. And see, Truex, down, he was trying down, to stay down, off down, the two car. And he got loose trying to just turn it off of him. I don't believe the 29 had any contact at all. Well, what Another a close call hit. for Almondinger in that 43. And Regan Smith in the 78 just nowhere to go. And Jamie McMurray in the one is going to sneak through here whew, and miss it. Trevor Bain also did a nice job of uh, getting through that. As did Dave Blaney. Tony Stewart and Joey Logano. That's three used up race cars. Right really there. is. That, that five car took a hard lick. Off turn four, Andy. Oh. Sorry, Kyle Larson. Oh, he's coming right coming back, back in the traffic. Yikes! Oh. Great nobody. job by everyone. All right, we're good. <laughs> no, oh. nobody hit us or anything. See if we get her going here, bud. Now he's going to try to stay on the lead lap here. Yeah, he, he got away with one there. All right, just make sure we don't get going too fast here. We got a tire to go down. Uh, he's running in 12th place, and when we saw him racing in that group before, it looked like he had his hands full. And now we have the proof. And we are just talking about uh, about Bowman. Uh, yep. As we watch the replay here, Larson, I don't know how many times he's raced here in a nationwide car, but I don't think it's too many. So. Looking for the cushion, and yeah. he's <laughs> not one there. He almost had a save. Now, this is where it gets really tight. Right here in this triangle, I thought he was going to get hit by multiple cars. Boy. Oh boy. Probably hadn't met some of those guys yet. Nice to meet you guys. Uh, <laughs> don't mind me. One more lap in a mile and a half. Left to go Maybe for Chase Elliott side, to get man. his first win. One more good lap. Leader is two plus seconds out back. Won a NASCAR Camping World Truck Series race last summer. Somewhat controversial circumstances surrounding the finish of that one. But what a bold outside pass on Kevin Harvick to take the lead in this one. And he's driven away with now a half a lap to go.
Take us to the, the, the final restart there in the contest. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, we were sitting there on a little bit older tires. Yeah, I spun the tires a little bit, but I got a pretty decent start. You know, and we went down into one, and I just wanted to get the outside of the 48. And out of nowhere, I just got slammed with the two, and it cut my left rear tire. And he's just, he's just a dipshit, you know. I mean, the way he races, I don't know how he's ever won a championship, and I'm just sick and tired. I mean, that's why everybody's fighting him and running him down and, uh, you know, your emotions are high. That was a huge, huge race for us. We had the car. We had the position. So proud of my team. And I'm proud of Jimmy Johnson for winning that race, not letting up, you know what, win that race. Oh, my God. The, the, con the con it's been for Eric Jones. He'll know he doesn't face another restart. Clear. One more smart one here. One more smart one. No need to force on the 25 to see which direction he's going to go. Set him up for... That's just some good coaching from the spotter. He's got this baby one. It's never over till it's over, That's right? right. We, saw, we saw poor Brendan Gaughan just going through the corner. A tire, car blew a tire and <laughs> wiped him right out. Anything can happen in NASCAR. I think about Eric Jones. He beat Kyle Busch in the Snowball Derby. Kyle said, I'm going to give you a chance to run a, run a truck. He did it nice in dominating to fashion. With him. And he tonight, the outback. he's going to take Jumping another in. step on NASCAR's guys, ladder. Yeah. First career victory, Eric Jones <laughs> comes in yeah. Texas. Jimmy Johnson's made the bottom work. I think you have to take that away from him. As soon as he went to the bottom, the 48 made an adjustment and went to the top. Now Jimmy's going to look to try to roll this momentum right here. This is his chance. This now is the closest he's going to the He's going to close to you, coming to you inside. Inside. Has the preferred line now to the bottom of the track. Can he complete the pass? He does. Jimmy Johnson in front of Texas. 312 laps led by the two car with four to go. They lose the lead. White flag in the air, one more time around in Texas. Now lap cars between the 48 and the two. Jimmy Johnson, less than a mile to go to get his sixth win at Texas. The six-time champion. Way back. To the bottom of the racetrack. Jimmy Johnson. Will lead six laps, but the most important one as he comes out of turn four. Johnson wins in Texas again. Great job, buddy. Great job. Victory guys, our track partner is where we need it. Great job.
I think the longer they run here, the there might less just advantage be those one tires. They're off in turn two. Oh, yeah. This is going to bring it out. Oh, Austin yeah, Dillon spins, spins around, around big big and crack. crashing behind him. Still He's on. Two Damn. teammates, Menard and oh, wow. Ryan Newman, all get caught up in Austin Dillon. Somebody Dillon's got run. into Austin Dillon. I can't yep. tell who it was. Jimmy Johnson, we believe. Here. See the closing rate of those newer tires. Right? The 11 kind of got them loose and got them up the racetrack. And and then the, up, right yeah. in front of the 48. I think you're right. He comes across right in front of Stenhouse. Oh, Stenhouse just clipped him. Nailed him. That's going to really hurt that left front fender. I think it's Look at all it three of the Childress cars piled up there. So you can see the three of Austin trying to get down, but the right in front of the 11, gets him loose, he goes up the racetrack. Jimmy's checked Try, up sideways, yeah. trying not to trying get into to get him. him. Stay off of him. Wow, look at that. Amazing save by Jimmy. Boy, and by Trevor Bain, who got almost Bain. sideways. Oh yeah, you're right, that three's like a pinball. 17's pretty bad. Well, he tried to pull it down in front of the 11. 11 sent him into me, and then I finished him off. <laughs> you okay on your car? Yeah, yeah, I just tapped him. Um, he just tried to shut the draw on the 11, and it wasn't gonna happen. And that's the downside to well, staying out. 20 hands back, trying to get a run here inside. Man. Checking up front, watch it, watch it, easy, easy, inside, inside, inside. Keep coming, keep coming, yellow's out, yellow's out. Can we get... Number of... <laughs> Three wide, oh my gosh. Oh, we got one spinning. Three and four, six car. Big wreck. Some good cars involved, teammates. 48 of Brennan Poole, 42 of Tyler Reddick. Suarez gotten somebody whole bunch of cars in this wreck. This is the problem with yellows. The track just keeps getting slicker and you can't hold on to the race cars like this. And you know, you put them side by side when the track's at its worst and you're you're trying to gain every spot you can get. Bubba went for a long slide. I don't think he got any damage to that six car. Adam, I didn't see any hard contact. He might have gotten through this without any problems. To three instead of four when he could have made it four. And in the middle comes Bubba Wallace track's just too slick it won't hold the grip he spins here in front of the field lots of contact all pretty light a lot of guys very fortunate kevin wow. harvick brandon jones brendan gone all right there could have gotten damage watch the 23 of spencer gallagher and our points leader elliot sadler right there as well there was a little bit of contact here with tower reddick and uh, daryl wallace which might have caused some of the issues there but still the track was very slick uh, and Bubba entered the corner with a lot of speed. It would have been hard to hold on to it either way. Look at Algar go sliding by. Reddick with hard contact. I think that 48 car is done. It did look like that Reddick clipped Bubba Wallace right there and sent Bubba sliding. Poole just went to the garage. And under NASCAR's new rules, if you're involved in a crash and you go to the garage, your day is done. So he is out for the afternoon, as you suspected, Michael. Saw Justin Algar sliding down to the apron of the racetrack. Not sure how much damage he got. Watch Harvick here. Kevin right. knows this isn't going to work. He's going to lift it early. He knows this is trouble. Six, one, six, right. Easy, easy, easy. Low, low, low. Keep coming outside. I think Kevin's all right. I don't believe there's enough damage right, to that 41 car to maybe even cause him to come to pit road. Yes. So one to go. Sponsored by Credit One Bank. <laughs> Larson is eight tenths of a second back. Closing. a tenth faster than Johnson that last lap, but he's going to run out of time. Jimmy Johnson last in victory lane at Homestead. Jimmy Johnson, Lowe's, Hendrick Motorsports, and Chevrolet win in Texas. They beat Kyle Larson by four tenths of a second. That Larson was on a tear, man. Couple more laps, it could have been different. If he could have gotten around, if he got around Joey Logano, he could have gotten there, but Joey Logano was the savior for the, for the 48. Thank you. Maybe even touch there, going into three. Oh, Briscoe gets loose. Austin Wayne self around. Heavy contact with the 99 of Peters up and over. At the finish, there's the replay of the accident that brought out the final caution in the wild ride endured by Timothy Peters.
It looked like the 22 of Austin Westhoff just got a little bit loose on exit of turn number four. Got into Johnny Sauter. Watch him get loose on the bottom. Gets into Johnny a little bit. Turns him sideways. Ben Rhodes able to get by. Timothy commits to the bottom. Austin Wayne comes down, down there. Wild ride for Timothy. Timothy just really didn't even have any choice but to go to the bottom, did he? No, that normally Austin would have probably come back up the racetrack after that, and he didn't. How about the view from Matt Crafton? Mm. And this is Timothy Peters. Watch this ride. of a break checked up early getting into turn one to allow eric jones to the bottom but then you saw chase elliott on the outside of the 18 and the 41 right there trouble oh, right one now. car around and one in the wall hamlin's in 11 and the 10 and hamlin the keslowski involved in almirola and jimmy johnson good grief that was crazy Hurry. oh he checks up a lot oh that gets 11 loose underneath the 10 and amarola Oh boy, the two got a ton of damage, so did the 48. Wow, the 48 plowed in that inside wall, there's a six. That took out a bunch of cars, guys. Like the 11 got a little bit loose, maybe, under the 10, couldn't... Yeah, I don't think he was expecting Amarola to check up as much as he did. I think Amarola knew the 18 was on the outside. He let him just kind of go in there on, on the outside. I'm not sure if that affected him or not. Back in here, keep it staying slow, stay slow. Keep coming straight, straight. Hey guys, Jimmy Johnson you guys pounded more that inside right wall. Right down but he has put the window right net down. That's the signal to the safety crews that he's okay. So it's Denny Hamlin that goes sideways in front of half the field. Mistake by Gilliland. Todd Gilliland just wants to make sure that, as Mike said, no mistakes. One lap left. The final lap for Todd Gilliland at Texas. He missed four races early this season while he waited to turn 18, but still expected that maybe he would be oh, able to oh, make the play. Oh, he's there. got a problem. I think he's got a problem. Gilliland is going to stop, and it's going to be the 24 of Haley for the second time in the playoffs. The leaders with a problem, just like in Canada. Justin Haley's gonna benefit and win at Texas. Unbelievable. The motor just sounded like it went south. Oh, he ran out of fuel. There he is coasting right there. Trying it took a while, but Reddick finally cleared him. And now Kyle Busch going after Christopher Bell for second. Trouble, it's the 19 of Brandon Jones and the double zero of Cole Hold Custer. Right Eighth caution of the day. Right there. Coming under you, coming under you. You okay? I'm all good. You okay, bud? Lost it under him. Earlier in the corner. Yeah, and this is, like Austin talked earlier, this is a very interesting entrance into the corner. And sometimes when you turn the car off in there, the entry is so flat that you lose the back almost off as you turn off the wall, uh, all the way down to the center of the corner. And when there's a car out there, you just wind up being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And when you're that outside guy, there's such an advantage to the side track until that happens. When, that, when you get loose underneath a guy, he's going with you most of the time. Yeah, and when that outside guy when you're the inside guy and that outside guy is coming back forward, as he's coming forward on the car, it pulls the back of the inside car around. And that's really, I think, what happened right there. Cole was probably fine when he turned in, but Brandon kind of rolled faster than he did coming into the corner, and it pulls the back of that car around with it as he went by. Great look at it right there. And great execution from our 
production group, all the camera folks who are out in the elements today. Very windy and cold day in Texas. We appreciate all they bring each and every week. Crafton is right there in the shadows. And look behind him, there's Ross Chastain. Oh, it's Alfredo. Alfredo, hard in the outside wall. So Anthony Alfredo, who had been side by side and had, had such a good, strong run going, quickly exiting his Toyota. That's gets sucked around, but I think Alfredo was loose on the way in maybe, and it gave Friesen a run around the outside. And when Friesen made the move to the high side, it just pulled the 54 on around. Yeah, it just robbed that truck of, of, of air, pushing that rear spoiler down, pushing the back of that truck down. Alfredo quickly out of the truck and the exit. We saw the fire. Uh, what causes the fire that we see there? We saw a fire during practice uh, yesterday, and it was because of oil, a broken oil line that uh, the headers ignited or something like that. Could be broken oil line or broken fuel line. You can see something uh, trailing behind that truck as it slid down the banking. It's critical for Brad to get this lead. He's only got two tires versus four behind him. Oh, oh the 12 gets loose up the racetrack. And the 22 almost did to him. He has to check up. They all check up behind him. And the, and the four almost got in the 22. Now the three wide. And oh, around goes record. the 18. He catches the 19. Mark Drake Jr. into the wall. Get going. They're wrecking behind it. Pick it up a, lot a little of contact. bit. contact. Cole Custer involved. From the highest of high to now the low. Cole Custer wins at Kentucky and now wrecks out at Texas. And that started, that wreck started at the front of the pack on the exit of turn four, and the wreck didn't happen until almost the start-finish line. It just bottle-jammed everybody up. They're on the bottom. The one, the ten, turn. Yeah. Yep. That's it. there. Nothing intentional. It's just... They're all three. They're all three wide, and when your cars are that close to each other, the air moves your car around a little bit. You're not in complete control. Yeah, we haven't got a good look at that 18 car, but I'm surprised that the front splitter's still on that thing after that trip through the grass. Byron spinning out of control here. Oh, Busher, did he make? Yeah, he made contact. He's been fast. Yeah. Had the trouble with the fuel. You see the 42 going through the the picture there with a lot of damage, a lot of smoke from Matt Kenza's car. See right there, Joey with a great job. And there's everybody behind him. There's nothing you can do at this point. And everybody has to go somewhere, run into each other. And then look how close everybody is and just not enough room. Watch that 18 car. Man. Yeah, that's true. X got in yeah. the fence hard there. Yeah, he did. They got hit hard. Man, that's a bad angle. Stenhouse Jr. We'll ride along with Kevin Harvick. Easy, go home, go home. Line here inside, 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 three white top, three white top, tight, three white top, keep digging, keep digging.